Hi, this is Jeff West from Oracle Product Management, and I'd like to give you a demonstration of using Maven with WebLogic and driving a continuous integration cycle with WebLogic and Maven using Hudson. With this demonstration, I'll show you how you can install WebLogic, create and configure a domain, start an application server instance, deploy your application and test it, and then undeploy your application and stop your WebLogic server instance, all using Maven. I'll also show you how you can set up your Maven palm file to do this all with one single command, and also how you can drive this process from Hudson, which is a continuous integration tool. I'd like to get started by reviewing the palm file and the project that I'll be using for this example. This is the WebLogic integration test profile example that's available on the WebLogic examples project on java.net. For this example, I've created a profile for Maven that when it's activated will change the behavior of the default uh, lifecycle. In this case, I have it not active by default. So I have to manually enable this when I run Maven. So let's take a look at what I've done here with the Maven plugin. Here I'm specifying the group ID, artifact ID, and version, and then some configuration that includes the username, password, the name for the application, and the artifact location for the zip distribution. Here I'm specifying two different executions. I'm specifying a WOS setup phase that I want to be run pre-integration test, and this will install WebLogic, create the domain, start the server, configure a data source using WST, and then deploy the application. Then integration test will be run, and in the post-integration test phase, I want to undeploy my application and stop the WebLogic server instance. In addition to this profile, I have also specified the Maven plugin in the main build section of the POM. And this is so I can show you the install and create domain and configuration tasks, all the other tasks, manually one by one. However, when I use the WLS integration test profile, we'll show how all of this can be done automatically. In addition, I have two servlets that are used for testing. One is a simple adding servlet that takes two parameters and returns a string with parameter 1 plus parameter 2 equals and then the sum of parameter 1 and 2. I also have a database ping servlet that very simply tries to look up a JNDI source, which is for an Oracle database, and then executes select one for dual, from dual. If it's successful, it will return a string that's a success. Otherwise, we'll see the stack trace for the execution in the servlet response. So let's switch back to the command line, and we can see these in action. I'd like to get started by showing you how to install the Maven plugin. The Maven plugin is shipped in the form of a jar file and a POM file that's included with the WebLogic distribution. You can find this in the WebLogic server slash server slash lib directory. When I run this, it will take the jar file and POM file and install them into my local repository and give them the path where it is putting the file. Next, in order to use the WS install goal, I need to install the zip distribution into my local repository. And I'll do that by calling the install file goal again of Maven, specifying the path to the zip distribution, then the group ID, artifact ID, packaging, and version number. And this will copy the file into my local repository. Next, we'll switch to the example program directory and show you how we can execute these goals from the command line. The first goal that we'll execute is the WS install goal. This will take the zip distribution from my local repository and unzip it into the current directory slash oracle slash software. This process takes about two minutes to execute, so in the interest of time, we'll fast forward. So now the installation is complete in two minutes and five seconds. And now we can see I have an Oracle directory in my project directory. 
Next we'll run the WLS colon create domain goal. And this will create a new domain using the default template and then put it into the oracle slash domain slash my domain directory off of my project directory. This is using the default WebLogic template, but you can also specify a custom template that can be included in your source control system to version this and have it done in an automatic way. So now the domain creation is complete and I can start a server instance using the WLS colon start server goal. Now my server started and I'll run a WLST script to create the data source that the database ping servlet relies on in order to be successful. Now I will run maven package to package my application into a war and then I'll use the WLS deploy goal to deploy the war to WebLogic. Now that my application has been deployed, I can run my integration tests by specifying MVN integration tests. And here we can see the results of the integration test phase. Since I have IT at the end of my test classes, and then they are in the appropriate location for Maven to pick them up, which is the source test Java directory, it will execute them automatically using the Maven convention defaults. So here I can see I have three tests that were run with one failure for the adding servlet, and then for the database ping servlet, I have one test that was run that was successful. The test that failed is always supposed to fail so that we can see that there is a failure result and what will happen in that case. Now that I've run my integration tests, I can run MVN WLS colon undeploy. My app is no longer there. So if I run MVN WLS colon list dash apps, we'll see that the application is now gone. And finally, I can use the Maven plugin to stop my WebLogic server instance. So with the 12C Maven plugin, you can support a continuous integration or a complete lifecycle build of your application and the WebLogic configuration, including testing the application on WebLogic, which is very valuable for confirming that your application will work when it's deployed into the runtime environment. So next I would like to show you how we can execute this process end to end with one simple command. First, I will remove the directory that we created where WebLogic is installed and where the domain lives as well. So now what I can do is specify MVN verify WLS uh, and activate the WLS integration profile. And we can see how Maven will handle the automatic execution of the entire set of Maven plugin goals from end to end, including integration test. So now we're on the install phase that takes about two minutes. So again, I'll fast forward. So now we're moving on to create the domain. Now we're starting the server instance, then we'll configure it with WST and then deploy the application for integration test. Now the application has been deployed and we'll run integration tests and we can see that the same result that I have my three tests for the adding servlet and one test for the database ping servlet. Now we're stopping the server after the application has been undeployed. And now it's complete. So in three minutes we have executed an entire life cycle with one simple command using the Maven POM definition, Maven plugin, and my integration tests and application.
Next, I'd like to show you an example with the Hudson Continuous Integration Server. Hudson's a very nice tool with a nice UI and a dashboard that's accessible via a web page that displays the status of all jobs. You can configure it to build projects automatically when the source control changes, and jobs can be created directly from a Maven project, which makes it easy to integrate with the WebLogic Maven plugin. And by default, the WebLogic install lifecycle is used, which executes build, package, test, and integration test phases. So let's take a look at creating a job in Hudson. This is the Hudson UI, and I'll create a new job. For this example, we'll use the simple Maven example. And then I'll choose the subversion URL, or I'll enter the subversion URL for the WebLogic examples project and specify the path to the actual simple Maven example. Then under build triggers, you can choose to build periodically. So for example, you could build hourly or actually daily to make sure that this gets executed at least once per day. And you can also pull the source control management framework, such as subversion, hourly if you wanted. So every hour it would check to see if there are any changes in subversion. And if there are, then it would tr trigger a build. Then we'll leave the rest to fault. So now I have a project created and I can choose build now to do an on-demand build. And then we can see here in this build area, once the build starts, you can see how many builds are running. We also have the option of watching the console output. So here I can see that it's checked out the code from subversion and that the build is successful in where it put the war file. One nice thing about using a tool like Hudson is that you can go back and get the war file and use it later if you wanted to. So I can download this war file and this is useful for having a central place where you build files and then distribute them out. But also if you know that version 1 was working and version 2 failed and you need a working version, you can go back and get the war file or the artifact for build number one. So it's very, very useful in that regard. Next, I'd like to switch back to NetBeans and show you how you can use NetBeans to create jobs in Hudson. So on the left here, you'll see a services tab where you'll find Hudson Builders. What I'll do is add a new Hudson instance, giving it my local Hudson. I click Add and now I can interact with the Hudson server. So if I wanted to, for the simple Maven example we just created, I can click Start Job, and we can see that there's a third job and it's running. I can also go back and see the artifacts that were created for the different builds for that project. So there's the WAR file if I wanted to go back and get it. But what I'd like to show you now is how to create a new build using Hudson and NetBeans. So when I select New Build, I'm given the option to select one of the Maven projects that I've already imported into NetBeans. The NetBeans will use the configuration information for that project and push it out to Hudson. So I'll select the WebLogic integration test example that we've seen on the command line and click Create. And Hudson will take you to the web page for the project. And then if you want, you can fine tune the project further. So you can see that it's taken my subversion settings. It's automatically set to pull the source control management framework hourly. And if I want to, I can come in and say, I also want to do a daily build at a minimum. Now I can click Save. And I can choose to build a project here, or I can run it from NetBeans. So I'll click Start Job. We'll see that their job is in queue. Build number one is in queue. If I switch back to the console, we can see that now there's a build running. So I can look at the console output and see what's going on. Here we can see that it checked out the code from Subversion. 
and now it is currently installing the WebLogic server using the zip distribution. So in the interest of time again we'll fast forward. This takes about two minutes. Okay, so now installation is complete and we're moving on to create the domain. Next we'll start the server and then we'll run the WST to configure the data source. So now the WST is running and then we'll deploy the application, integration test, undeploy the application, and then stop the WebLogic server. So there we can see all the tests were run. And now that testing is complete, I can go back to the project, see the latest build, and then look at the test results. Here I can see that four tests were run and there is one failure. So if we click on the module, we can see the tests that were run and then we have the test that failed highlighted here. So if we click on servlets, we can see the tests, we can see the duration and statistics for those tests. And we can see which build it was when this started failing. So Hudson is a very nice tool. Uh, you can see a lot of information from the individual builds. You can see the mojos that were executed and the time that they took. So these were the different aspects of Maven that were executed. And you can see the execution ID that we provided here. So if you're troubleshooting your Maven builds and what's going on with Hudson, this gives you, this gives you a great interface to do that. We can also click on integration test and it shows you about the failsafe integration test plugin. So, going back to the Hudson dashboard, we can see that the latest build for this project failed, and we can see that the build stability is every build that it is aware of, which is one, has failed, and there is one test that's failing out of four total tests. Thanks for your time today. You can find more information and demos about WebLogic using one of the online channels shown.